What is going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Delicate Plan Podcast. I am Primitive, and as always, I have my co-host with me, Dante. How you doing, bro? Man, it's been a long time since we did this, man. I'm glad to be back. I know, I know. What happened? Where were we? Where'd we go? (laughs) I mean, I I ended up having a kid these past couple weeks, so I've been in and out of the hospital, ripping and running around, so... You know, number eight is here. He's good. So I was able to get back on track starting today. There you go. I mean, and that's what happens. I mean, we were talking a little bit before the podcast as well. So um, as you were saying, you're a little bit out of the loop as far as Digimon-wise the past couple weeks. Mm-hmm. We were having the DigiFest things that were going on. We had Worlds happen, all that stuff. But, you know, sometimes life does get in the way. And when you get having a kid, I mean... I don't know what that's like personally, but you know, I understand. I understand you got to take care of the priorities in life, but we are back. We are here. We are here for episode number. I believe this is 11. So we're in the double digits. We're going to get up there, keep it going. And, um, you know, just like we said previously in another podcast, just because the podcast isn't up for a week or two, doesn't mean it's gone. It's just, you know, things happen. And whenever we got time to go in here, sit down and get talking about some Digimon, we're going to go ahead and do it and bring it all to you. So we are back and you know, there's, there's no big crazy events that happened last time. Some of the other podcasts that we talk about, there's these big announcements and we haven't really had anything too big about that, but some things that we can talk about are definitely like the state of the metagame right now, because we haven't really gotten to sit down and talk about what bt7 is looking like especially since we were in a little bit of a like different metagame where we were having the mulligans and we were having the sideboards and people were prepping for digifest so a lot of the online events that were being played were played with those rules and then now that the digifest is over a lot of them have started to just abandon the side decks um, and keeping the mulligans, especially since on the Card of Magicka, it did say that for the Ultimate Cup, we aren't going to be having side decks, but we still have modified rules. So with modified rules, but no side decks, that just sounds like mulligans to me. Obviously, it's not confirmed, but um, th- those are kind of like the big things to go over. So that's what we're probably going to be talking about today. So, I mean, starting off with the BT7 metagame, I know you've been out a little bit, Dante, but... It is blue. It is looking very, very blue. Um, Blue won the World Championships. It won the Digifests. Um, It topped multiple Digifests. It was winning multiple tournaments. I was able to win one of the True Champ games with Blue Hybrid as well. And um, I think there's a few things that could go into that. Um, One of the things that I think are the biggest things is the side decks. And we'll kind of talk about why I think like the side decks like attributed to blue being so powerful right now. But another thing talking about the blue, we all know the blue and we'll get into that, but this is something you're going to enjoy. I think the second best color and the second best deck right now is very clearly got to be purple. It is a deck that is very kind of can be skill based, can take a lot of brain power if you will. But I mean, you have so many ways to play it. You have the Trubimon, you have the yellow Trubimon, you can play Lilith loop, you can play Eismon turbo. Um, a video that I just posted earlier today on my channel showcased a deck that is just essentially Mastamon turbo. It's just swing in with Ginkaku promote, swing in with Cerberus Mon, you Cerberus Mon werewolf mode to pop, swing again. Once they got no security left, then you can, or one security left, you can go ahead and Mastamon up, trash the top security, bring back promote swing with the mastermon swing with the ginkaku promote like there's a lot going on so purple is one of those decks where it is it put itself in the metagame it showed that it can definitely keep up with blue it can get results and uh, it's been it's been doing so especially by ying aka human he has been on an absolute tear with the lilith loop uh with the mastermon winning multiple online events getting third at Digifest, like really putting the deck on the map as the purple deck in the format outside of Cherubimon. But what do you, what do you think of purple right now? I'm sure you've at least seen some of the stuff. You are the purple player like in here. So you were looking forward to these type of cards with the Eismons and stuff. Uh, we knew that it was going to be pretty powerful, but I didn't know if expected it to be this powerful as well as this versatile. Yeah, um, like you said, purple is like pretty skill intensive. Um, with purple, man, you can go so many different routes. Uh, I've been seeing that 
it's funny how the metagame has been, it is, they shifted to where it slowed down just a tad bit with the hits to the ban list and the shift in the metagame to where a deck like Trubimon, you know, that can pretty much rush out, the, that can pretty much, you know, put multiple Digimon out of the trash into the board, you know, setting up all these tamers and whatnot. Like it, it even gave that kind of deck style that how we saw with Bond, when you put four or five, six different tamers on board and they all become just, you know, super duper useful. Mm -hmm. So it, it just opened up the door for Purple to adopt that same play style. And I mean, Ice Mine, we know how powerful Ice Mine is. Ice Mine is 100, like, it's getting hit. It's going to one. And it's going to one for a reason. Like, being able to spit out multiple Ice Mine to where they come out to be five, seven, nine K beat sticks. And then to keep on bringing them back, to keep on bringing them back. Like, I mean, I've even been. You know, play. I've even been, you know, play testing with, you know, an Ice Bond Turbo deck of my own with the newest mine, given everything rush that comes off the trash. So it's one of those things where um, Purple is getting extremely aggressive. And Liv, we, we knew Liv wasn't really going to go anywhere. Mm. We knew it was going to get, it was going to get neutered a little bit because of MDF being gone. But we knew it wasn't going to go anywhere because of Ice Bond being so dang powerful. Um, I mean, as far as purple is, I, I still think purple would just stay top three color. Uh, will purple dominate? Maybe not until the structure deck comes out, the Mastermind, mm -hmm. where you get the yellow and purple hybrids going on. But not hybrid, excuse me, the dual color cards. Yeah. Um, but the, I mean, it's one of the things to where, um, we, I mean, we saw blue coming. Blue is just so versatile. It has so many weapons and so much in its arsenal. But purple got the tricks up the sleeve that a lot of people, you know, they don't read up on purple cards and they don't really take purple too seriously. Because like you said, purple is very like, it's mind numbing. Like imagine going through eight rounds of playing with purple and then not only that, possibly playing against purple as well. Like it, it really wears on the brain a lot. And a lot of yeah, people I definitely got to give respect to, to purple in. players who uh, make big tournaments. Those those are, you all are bigger brain giga brains. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I agree with you. Like that aspect, like purple's, I think purple is probably the most complex color, just because of how the play style is and how the different avenues that you can play. But of course, blue would be the dominant color. We like blue is Bandai's baby. Like one hundred percent. Like we see blue getting way more support than red. But jeez, I didn't think it was going to be this much of a swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, the the thing about blue, and we kind of talked about this in, like, a previous podcast where we kind of were talking about, like, why why is Gabu Bond so much better than Agu Bond or so much representation, stuff like this. It's just blue cards are good, right? And, yes, they hit Ice Wall, which was, like, a really good card on the in the format and I, i'm sure nobody's really like saying man i wish i wish i was still playing four ice wall except for like blue players right but the thing is is even in the new set they hit ice wall and it almost was just not even enough because of how powerful tommy and cory kakumon are um especially when paired with like beowulf mon so you can bounce things back stun return your cory kaku bounce it again later tommy's security trigger comes out of security to be able to strip three sources so a lot of times it can invalidate big stack decks such as the dora goromon x antibody where you build up the dora graymons put them underneath you just strip that away they go from having like three security checks to one security check after just hitting Tommy off top check. Jessmon also gets hurt by it too because you can strip their savior, you can strip their Greymon, you can make it so they no longer get the tie boost and stuff like that. So blue is just the color that it, it, it's been getting really, really good cards for the entirety of the card game. And so when you're when you're getting really good cards and you look at a color like green, which is getting a lot of the times mediocre cards, it's getting some strong cards then colors like green kind of um, go in and out of being good to mediocre. As to where blue, it's just always there because it just has good cards. You know, we like we saw a long time things like Jamming Vmon being in a lot of decks because mm -hmm. it's just a really good rookie. Hammer Sparks, uh, Howling Memory Boost now. I mean, there's just it's just really good. It's got strong cards on play. It's got strong uh, security because you have things like... 
Kakaitis Breath or Rattlestar, Hammer Spark. You still have one Ice Wall, really strong. You have amazing tamers. Some tamers are very strong, but it's really hard to, like, be on par with things like Davis and Sora Joe, especially now with Tommy in the metagame. Sora Joe just yeah. gets so much stronger. Um, and it's just really hard to play around too, because when you look at blue, you're like, okay, how do you hinder this? And a lot of the times it's through memory blockers because they have a lot of memory gain through hammer sparks, ice, um, howling memory boosts, stuff like that. Um, so you want to stop that, but it's just blue is so strong that it doesn't really even kind of phase it, which I guess will kind of put me into like the side deck thing where I think one of the reasons why blue is so prominent in the Digifest is because we had side decks legal for them. I think that if we didn't have side decks legal for the Digifest, then I'm not saying blue wouldn't have won. I still think it's the strongest deck, but I don't know if it would have been as dominant, had as many um, top placings. Because, I mean, it was like one Digifest, it was like 11 of the top 16 were blue hybrids, and then the other Jeez. one, it was like 9 out of the 16 were blue hybrids, right? Like, it was... It, it was I don't know if those are the exact numbers, but it was large majorities of these top cuts were blue hybrids, and they were like different versions, right? Like some were the Azulong, some were Magna, some were Bond of Friendship, but it's all generally the same, right? It's like, I'm going to stun you, mm -hmm. and, and then I'm going to have like big swing turns. And the reason why yeah. I think blue did so well with these side decks is because blue's main deck is already better than most other decks with a side deck and that's like not counting in the side decks and so when you like give blue the side deck where they have access to all these amazing cards that they can put in their deck and they can utilize non-blue cards very well such as avenge kidmon or purple mimi you can put those cards in your side decks and not really lose too much while gaining a lot in other advantages uh in other matchups but with blue hybrid it's it's very easy to counter side deck opponent side deck so if somebody's gonna side deck versus you memory blockers blue it, it almost doesn't matter because you can side deck stuff in that's very easy oh you're gonna you're gonna side in more gazimons or madokis that's great because i sided in supreme cannon i sided in aqua viper i sided in kendo gururu mon um with the sideboard legal counter sideboarding became very much a thing for blue hybrid because there are so little matchups in this format where yellow has or blue has such a hard matchup that it needs to dedicate a large portion of its side deck to it like for example with bond of friendship last format if we had the side decks there a large portion of your side decks were going to be committed to the diaboramon matchup and the security control matchup but with this format right now blue i don't really feel like there's that many decks that are you really need to just target it because you're or else you're gonna have that bad of a matchup you can more so just make your deck better versus other stuff because it's like it's really good versus purple right now because you can you can you naturally play memory blockers so you don't have to side that in you can just they kill your madoki you play another one you shut down their jack raids you shut down their lilith loop game um they don't play as many memory tamers so you can choke them out you can gain a bunch of memory sorjo like the matchup is really good but then you add in side decks you can add in like purple mimi so it's like oh, okay i don't have my madoki out but i have my purple mimi out so even if even if you jack raid i'm gonna neutralize it with my mimi or i'm gonna neutralize your mimi with my mimi and you can get these like counter side deck cards like we saw a lot of side decking being things that were rookie removals forbidden trident uh supreme cannon aqua viper because there was these things where people were realizing okay people to beat blue hybrid to side deck into the side or it's like memory blockers and like digivolution blockers such as siakomon and gaussmon and there's other things like purple mimi and whatnot but the main things are kind of the uh floodgates like madoki and siako and so a lot of the side decks were just committed to getting rid of rookies that were annoying because those were the most annoying things. And getting rid of rookies is like a much easier thing to do as far as just with like one card than it is for uh, like champions or ultimates, right? With champions or ultimates, you have to commit things like Rattlestar, Kaida's Breath or things like this. As for with rookies, you can play a three drop Supreme Cannon and bounce back four rookies right away. And then your opponent just lost like all kinds of advantage. So... I think the side decks in its current state make blue just way too strong because they can 
their main deck is usually way more powerful than other decks main decks even considering their side decks and you can just you can use your side deck as just a counter side deck to make it so that way when people do try to tech in these cards to like beat you then you can just counter side deck them and especially right now when a lot of the side decks are very much the same it's like okay if i'm going to be counter decking blue i'm going to put in memory blockers i'm going to put in uh Digivolution blockers or reduction blockers, and I'm gonna put in like Neo Devimon, and that's why I was side decking in things like uh, Aqua Viper, main decking Supreme Cannon, and I side decked Rattlestar because I was thinking, okay, what's gonna be the most annoying thing? Well, people's main decks isn't as annoying to me, but being sided into versus like Madoki and Neo Devimon, those are pretty annoying, so I'm just gonna make my side deck better versus their side deck when they side deck in but i'm not necessarily going to change my game plan as to where with a lot of other side decks you have to like really change your game plan like with christmas for example the red green hybrid they'll side deck in a lot of like more defensive cards because the cards uh the deck's very aggressive and so they'll side in things like atomic blaster um maybe even potentially something like i saw some people running one to digivolve blockers just so that way they had a little bit something better um if they wanted to go on top of their red rookies or anything like that and it kind of changes the dynamic of the deck because you're kind of either going more aggressive you're going more defensive stuff like that's where with blue hybrid um you're just kind of just you're thinking about what are they going to side deck versus you and what can you put in to make it so their side deck is neutralized by your side deck and then just rely on your main deck being better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. With the side deck, blue just, <laughs> blue just really dominates. It's one of the things to where blue came out the gate, the first three sets, it was this powerful, small cost, you know, very good... You know not above average you know just option cards digimons inheritables so it was one of those things to where if it ever got too much power it could really overtake the meta game mm -hmm. now but we like i said we blue has so much in his repertoire it has so much in his arsenal blue is literally the most versatile color in the game no if ands or buts yeah, about no, it not, not not contested in any way no nah, because blue can either strip all sources and play the strip game blue can play the aggressive game with their small hybrids like blue can play a stun game with the tommy um cory kakuman and like the zulaman um, you still have Hetz the Blau out there ripping and running around somewhere if somebody wants to really play a stun type of deck. Blue is so, so versatile. It can get any avenue and is good at every avenue. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And Blue purple, purple so... can come close to it. Like, like I say it's like uncontested as the most versatile deck, and I think that that it is uncontested, but purple is definitely like the second up there, especially with what we've gotten in BT6, EX1, and BT7, purple started popping off. They Bandai said, oh, wait, we, we need to make purple do something here, and they made it do it really good, but the thing is, is with purple, is it's very reliant on other things in your deck going well. Is scatter mode great? Yeah, but, or like, Eismon's great, but yeah, you need scatter mode in your grave, or it's like... Yeah. Scatter mode's great, it dies, but if you miss your Eismons, then it's like, okay, yeah, you get to fill up. Jack Raid's cool, but unlike Hammer Spark, where you just gain a memory, Jack Raid, you have to have 10 cards. Obviously, there's the upside of if you have 20, you get to gain two memory and stuff like that, but there's just a lot of cards that are kind of reliant on each other. We saw this in purple before, like even the Ginkaku Promote stuff, it was like, okay, yeah, you can bring back Ginkaku Promote, but if you don't have Kinkaku and Ginkaku and Trash to go underneath, then it's not as crazy. So it's like, purple's versatile. But it, it kind of relies on two, three card combos or things working well with each other as to where blue just has a lot of singular, highly powerful cards mm -hmm. that, yes, when you pair them together, they're they're great, but they're still strong. Like, like Tommy and Korikaku together are obviously incredibly powerful, but Tommy alone is very powerful. And Korikaku alone, the ability that it can digivolve for one on top of a champion or can just digivolve on top of a Strabimon to get its effect is a very singularly powerful card, which makes it just so versatile because you can have many one-card high effective combos as to where a lot of other decks need two, three cards to work together or you need the perfect stack um, to really get that full capabilities that you're looking for. Yeah, like I, like you said exactly what I'm about to say. Like When it comes to blue, each and every last single card that blue plays 
it's very, very efficient. A purple, and being a purple player, we need to combo. It's one of the things to where, while blue is very versatile, purple is extremely explosive. Like, you can combo your entire deck into your trash and put 10, 12 Digimon on board and swing for game. That is purple. Purple can do that at any given time. That's what purple do. Purple is a combo, combo, combo heavy deck. And if it goes off, there's really nothing you can do to stop it. Blue, on the other hand, blue's like, oh, I'm in this situation, got a card for it. Oh, I need this to happen, got a card for it. Oh, I need one more memory. Oh, wait, got a card for that. Oh, I need to digivolve off of a tamer, got a card for that. Oh, I need to bounce things back instead of delete them because they get their effects. Get cards for that. So blue covers all bases. And that's why that's why I right now put blue ahead of purple. Because while purple is extremely strong and still versatile, uh, there's a lot more cards that are coming out for other for all these other colors that has either on deletion effects or has a um, effects to where they can't be deleted, like uh, Dora Greymon, for example. Like, you can't delete that. So it just sits there on the board, and like, well, I, that's a threat I have to worry about next turn. It's not something like, um, you know, oh yeah, maybe I could just spin it or get rid, or get rid of it somehow, some way, do this, do that. Like, no, it's like, yeah, you can't you can't touch it. You know, like it's, like, it's just gonna be there. Like, Blue can probably find some way to get rid of it. Purple is like if it's not deletion, yeah, like like is my purple is gonna like uh that's gonna be rough. Let me just try to go you know as far as deep as wide of a board as I can. And then when it comes to that when it comes to that issue, maybe something out of security would check it, or I have something the next turn. So purple, you really have to think your turns out. While blue is is um you know it has a high skill cap with it. But it's easier to achieve it in blue. Exactly. Just because like, everything is exactly. so efficient. Yeah. And that that's one thing that I think is a misconception about blue, which is um, probably more prominent versus, like, some of the, like, lower to mid, as far as, like, knowledge-based players. Um, they, they see blue, and they see the dominance of blue, and they relate it to that like you could like you can just play blue and you can have success because you're just going to get like this deck can carry me or you're getting carried by blue and it's it's not true at all just because you have the best cards the thing about blue is blue has a lot of flexibility it has a lot of resources one of the reasons why it's a little more reflexible than um purple is also because it's mass memory gain sora joe howling memory boost mm -hmm. Um, just things like that. The, the the memory gain is off the charts, but when you're when you're playing blue, if you don't understand what deck you're playing against, what your key cards are, how to resource management, you're you're still going to not be winning with it. And that's like one thing that I've seen with people in our local like scene who are playing blue. They'll ask me questions, and it's like I'll play versus them, or I'll watch them play, I'll review one of their sets, yada yada yada. It's I see them make plays that I wouldn't make because they they see cards for the power that they can get immediately as to what their overall value is. So, like, for example, yes, maybe Digivolving on top of Kori Kakumon on top of a Tommy to stun one of the Digimon on the board because they have something on the board is great, but what if you need that Tommy for the later game? What if you see them building up a, a stack in the back uh, in the raising and you need to keep that Tommy out so that way you have a turn where you can go ahead and promote, you can swing, you can trash the sources with um, Sora Joe by suspending. If you need to, you can uh, trash more sources with another Tommy or Howling, but then you can digivolve that Tommy on top. You can go ahead and get that stun. You can put Beowulf on top and get going and stuff like that. Like The main thing I've seen with blue players is that they just, they just see... The, the power of the cards that are in their hand, and it's not a deck that they see straightforward, like a couple turns ahead, because there's a lot of decks where I don't really think you need to think a lot of turns ahead. Let's give red, red hybrid. Yes, exactly. Red. Red is like, you don't need to think a couple turns high. You just, just build your stack and raising and swing. That's your, like, that's yep. what you're doing, right? Like, like if you're playing like ancient Greymon, if you're playing, um, Jessmon, stuff like that, 
yeah, there are nuances to it. You do have to think about what your opponent can do. But for the most part, no matter what matchup you're playing against, you're going to be building up a stack and then you're going to swing and just hope for the best that comes out of security. And so it's not really like, okay, man, if I, if I, if I digivolve my Agunimon on top of my tie now and get of my, get rid of my red memory boost or my, uh, my memory tamer and I can get choke later, I, I'm going to lose. It's just like, no, if you need to cycle with red and get rid of your memory tamer, it's going to be a lot less detrimental than if you get rid of your memory tamer with something like blue, because you just are building this big stack. And if you have to pass your turn, each turn, digivolving, digivolve for three up into ultimate. Now your opponent goes to, um, now your opponent goes to two or whatever. It's their turn and they play something that puts you at one. And then you digivolve for three and adjust one and pass back. Well, Yes, having your memory tamer is going to make that a little bit faster, but the thing is, is you don't need those resources as much to win. As to where with things like Sora Joe, Tommy, and Davis, you do kind of need those a little bit better, just because blue has the unfortunate downside of if you have bad, like, you can get ahead very early, you can keep the lead, mm -hmm. and you can kind of get unexpected comebacks, but the thing is, is, like, I've played, I've played a bunch of blue, right? Most people mm -hmm. associate me with the color blue in Digimon because I've played it so much. Some people might associate me with yellow because Shine Greymon, Lord Nightmon, blah, blah, blah. But I've had people tell me all the time that when I'm not playing blue, they find it weird because they like, like I, they see me playing blue. So when I play blue a bunch, I know that if you fall behind and you have a bad security, a lot of times you can just lose because you mismanage your resources. Like I was playing an online tournament and I had a matchup that versus a ex anybody deck that I probably should have won like 100% of the time. And I made one bad mistake of digivolving um, my on top of my Davis at a certain point to cycle where it seemed like it was okay. And getting rid of that Davis lost me the entire game because my opponent just choked me out while they built up to Dorogoromon. They swung five checks and then they popped Howling Memory Boost and then they um, and then they went in for Grumblemon for game. As to where if I had my three memory every turn, I would have been able to continually choke my opponent at one. I would have been able to set up Madokis while doing other things. Like there was one turn where if I saw my Davis, I would have been able to play Madoki and Ice Wall, put my opponent at one. And then they wouldn't have been able to pop the Howling Memory Boost for game. Um, and if they attacked, it would have passed turn. So it was just kind of one of those things where it's like one bad play threw it away and you kind of have to understand that as where with a lot of other decks like green and red and stuff like that right now you can kind of just build the same puzzle every single time you just want to do the same thing and hope for the best like with red green hybrid you kind of just want to get up into ancient beetlemon as fast as possible and just keep going mm -hmm. and that's kind of what you're looking for right and blue and purple are the two decks that i think aren't like that right now and they're doing the best because they're rewarding good play it's just and now people are going to be hearing this and they're probably going to be rolling their eyes because i'm talking highly of blue and most people are like tired of blue and they think that it's just <laughs> this, like this no brain deck but it's really not true if you ask people who are playing blue at the highest level sure th like if they if they if they disagree that blue's broken then they're lying to you I i'll tell you right now i play yep. a bunch of blue i love blue it it's so broken I have multiple games where it literally feels unfair because my cards are just so strong that it invalidates some other decks. But the thing is, is once you get to a high level, a lot of people who are playing blue are going to fail because they don't know the like nuances that you kind of need to it. So it's a deck that has like a high ceiling and a low floor, but those type of decks are the ones that usually like are rewarding the most and that's and purple is like that forever i feel like like purple is always going to be a low low floor high ceiling type deck yeah yeah because when you look at purple as a color purple's like oh yeah i want everything in trash so somebody you know right at the top of the head like oh let me just you know draw and trash as much as possible it's like nah you need to know what you're trashing turn, right then by turn six turn seven you got seven cards in your deck and you're like, oh, uh, yeah, I went too fast. Yeah, you went too fast. Uh, you have to know when to pace yourself. Especially like in Live Loop, you can deck yourself out. As soon as Live Loop gets going, and I've done it many, many times, you like, okay, I have to literally deck myself out in order to win. I'm about to go in now. Mm -hmm. And you have to do it right, because if you don't, you're going to deck yourself out to a point to where as soon as you end your turn, game is done. Yeah, they think it's past turn. You can't draw, so it's one of those things to where 
And of course, you know, people's gonna be rolling their eyes because like, oh, it's a purple player talking about purple and a blue player talking about blue. But <laughs> if they're the best two colors, they're the best two colors. Like, I'm a purple player, but you know for a fact I play Alpha Mine. Mm-hmm. Alpha Mine is a better black Jessmine. Like, it, it's just like, oh, you wanna play Uncle Bunga? Play Dual Gore Mine. You can hit for three, four, five security in one swing easily. Mm-hmm. Like, it's easy to stack it, it's all searchable. But my thing is, when it go against blue, it has a hard time because blue naturally just strips sources. And mm. you can't build up your sources pr- properly because it says put at the bottom when most blue cards say strip the bottom. So it's kind of, it's, it's pretty much you know, making a wash there. And we got purple. Yeah, purple can go toe to toe with blue. But like you said, when you throw in the side deck, then that, that um, back and forth, that 60 40, maybe I'm in favor of blue. Now it becomes a 75 25 in favor of blue because while the purple cards are just as good as the blue cards, the purple cards all tend to have a higher cost when it comes to playing them than the actual blue cards. And then if you take the cards in a vacuum, the blue cards are way more effective than the actual purple cards because a lot of purple cards say delete one to delete the other one. Delete that to unsuspend. Trash this to do this. Draw this, trash this to do this. Or did you borrow this, pay memory, do this. Or when something happens, then do this. Like it's very, very combo heavy, which makes it very, very good against the other four colors. But against blue, that when you sit there and you do 19 different effects in your turn and you don't kill them, they can turn right back around and go, did you evolve? Yeah. Oh, okay. So let me play this card to wipe your board. Then you're like, well, why did I do that in the first place? Ain't it? Then if you're going to just do that. So yeah, it blue is very efficient. And I'm not surprised that blue is the top dog, the top color. And guess what? We're getting structured decks for... You know, the best two colors in the entire format right now, blue and purple. And that's coming out the first week of May with a brand new set that's going to boost blue and purple. Mm. Blue more than purple, but blue and purple. Well, so, the, the Dynasty Masty stuff is pretty good. Like, they both get they both get pretty gnarly. But, yeah, I mean, looking at it right now, it's hard to... Because, I mean, if you look at Japanese meta you can see that a lot of other colors start to rise up in the future, but it's hard to see, like, in the metagame right now, it's hard to, like, look forward to seeing what we get in BT8 and not just expect that, like, blue, green, purple, yellow is not going to just continue to be OP. Right, I mean, in my opinion, I think green is going to be a sleeper. I think it might take number three when it comes to the top three colors. It might edge out Alpha Mine just because Shiva Mine's a card. And with Shiva Ma just being the most defensive green card I've ever seen in my life, the most defensive card I've seen in my life in this game, like to to be able, to have the ability to say you can't play option cards while I'm suspended, and then when I unsuspend during my unsuspend phase, you pop a security because guess what? I'm fair. Like building a Shiva deck to be very very controlling and very very defensive, like how green in the beginning was supposed to be. That might be a sleeper deck that a lot of people might want to watch out for. Mm-hmm. That green Shiva deck is something to not sleep on, especially because everybody's playing options. Who's not playing options? Blue is probably option heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, I mean it's, it is. Like, it's, it's, it's always it's, option heavy. I mean, it's it's some decks are maybe not as option heavy, but I mean you always got a lot of options that you want to play, especially with the two different memory boosts, the hammer sparks, the ice walls, the bouncing, Mm -hmm. um, that all those cards are going to be, I mean, Shiva Mon definitely has potential. It just depends on, it definitely depends on how option heavy some of the decks are. But the thing is, if you look at like a lot of the top decks right now, they're playing a lot of, a lot of the stuff that they do revolves around options like purple, purple. You take options away from purple. It does. It starts to lose a lot. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. I think right, one thing that we should we should touch on too, since we're kind of talking about purple, we're talking about yellow purple going forward. Yellow hybrid in the current format, right? With the deck that I I touted as the best deck of the format at the beginning, um, it probably wasn't up until just recently that I kind of res- 
change that statement. Um, I, I was playing Yellow Hybrid at the beginning. I stopped playing it pretty quickly because I found I just I hate tying. I'd rather, as much as I don't like to lose, I would rather lose than tie because I'd rather lose a fair game than lose on timer because tying is tying in tournaments where the to win you have to go undefeated a tie is essentially the same as a loss so like i i ended up dropping it but i still thought it was the best I, I still was like it, it just has the best cards jet selfie is very powerful the purple package is really strong um you can just you, can, you have these great tamers it's really hard to play around tk kari kari is a very or uh, tk itself is a very good memory card to be able to search get resources zoe allows you to just curate your stack it works really well with dynasmon but mm -hmm. but then I kind of started playing blue, and then I was like, all right, never mind. Blue's just kind of kind of cracked, and regular purple is just cracked with like the Eismon and stuff. And yellow hybrid kind of just really fell off. I feel like now, obviously, a lot of people are still playing it. It's still a strong deck. I'm not saying it's bad, but it it went from like the the deck that I thought was the undisputed best to just being. It's, it's just a, like it's a deck you got to expect for, but you're going to see way more purple Eismon type stuff and blue hybrid and even potentially like red green hybrid than you're going to see over yellow. I don't know if this is because other people also came to the conclusion that they just don't want to tie or they just found it to not be as powerful. But that is the deck that I feel like was like purple, I think was the like maybe green, red was the biggest deck that kind of like went from maybe not being the biggest thing to being really big but yellow was the deck that i think fell the hardest as far as like ranking and what the best deck is and even if it fell down to just third or fourth place i think a deck going from perceived to be the undisputed number one deck to being third or fourth place is a pretty big shift in the meta game fairly quickly as well yeah i i think with the you know how we had side decks. So a lot of people sided stuff for just in case they go against like something like yellow. You still have the in you still have um delicate plan for red decks. You still have um emergency program shut down for any deck that wants to play it. So like yellow really wanted to depend on hitting them option cards. And when people probably say, Yeah, let me side in a couple of these just in case I need to go up against like a yellow deck. It really took the power of yellow hybrid away. But I think if people went more of a, I'm going to just stat security and I'm going to just, you know, build my tamers in the back and make my security be 13, 14, 15 K off of a three K Digimon. If it goes more that route rather than the typical yellow security control type of deck, I think they might see more success, but a lot of people are already seeing the, you know, just the pitfalls of yellow right now. Mm -hmm. Now, who's to say that's going to change in BTA? Who's to say that's going to change in ESO2? When Renamon comes out, yellow might, you know, take the number two spot, even the number one spot, because it's so versatile and it's so, you know, consistent. Mm -hmm. But, like, right now, yeah, yellow is in a weird spot. It's almost like yellow, uh, yellow, green, and black are trying to jockey for that third position because they all got these top dog decks that can beat each other and get beat by each other. And they have a great shot against the top two colors. But like purple and blue really just edges them out like also slightly. Mm -hmm. And then when you put in the side decking aspect of it, it's not even a contest. Because while yellow has very defensive cards side decking, it doesn't have that many good option cards, like a, a, a huge yeah. pool of it. Same thing with black. Black has great option cards, but guess what? They're seven, eight costs. They're huge. Uh, yes, they're board whites, but they're freaking huge to the point to where you're past the turn and your opponent can recover if they have the option to. Like, give me eight memory and, and give me eight memory and you wipe my board. I'm going to just build up into a Lilithmon and put two other level threes and choke you out. And then what are you going to do about it? Now, you're behind because you gave me so much memory. Or in blue, in blue, you can just pop out, you know, level three, set up your tamers to be like, okay, next turn, you're done. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to just go, you know, attack, attack, hybrid, hybrid, hybrid. Oh, that's game. Right? So, like, those option, like those option cards, like, while they're very, very good, 
it's not many of them. And in green, green is really all about suspending your opponent's Digimon or doing something when your opponent's Digimon is suspended. So green has a niche to it. So it's one of those things to where those three those three colors jockey for third place, but there is a gap between third and second with purple, and then there's still a gap between second and first. And if you add inside, if you add inside decking, the gaps just get bigger. Like yeah. regardless of what we want to say. Yeah, and I mean one thing I should throw in about yellow purple for anybody who's keeping up in Japan is yellow hybrid. So I mean we get dual colors, we get. We get Black War Grandma. We're gonna get. We get over the next set, sets. We get crazy stuff. Mother D Reaper. All that stuff. It gets. It gets crazy, right? But mm-hmm. Yellow Hybrid is topping many events in Japan still. After and I mean, you got to keep in mind in Japan, Yellow Hybrid stuff from BT Seven came out a long time ago for them. They've been doing this for a while, so it's it's a deck that's stood the stand of time especially now with the restricted or with the restricted list and ban list uh it's still going and so it's a deck that like i said earlier i thought i thought it just had some of the best cards i mean it's just jet selfie is very good zoe's good t like yellow has good cards yellow's yellow's on almost on par with blue of having highly versatile cards um but it's just it, it fell really hard. So it's a deck that had high expectations, still probably has high expectations going in the future just because of how much it's still topping and doing well. But in the current format, I feel like it just had a really hard fall from glory into just kind of being a, a respectable deck. But I mean, it's, it wasn't, it won a digi fest. Um, I think the Canada digi fest, it might've won another digi fest, but I mean here um, in the States, it, it just, it didn't it couldn't do it compared to like blue and purple and and my thing would be with this so a lot of people have to understand when in any card game not me any in every single last card game you have to understand that ocg and tcg are different play styles in the ocg they're more conservative and they play a more conservative play style in the OCG. This is why Yellow ran rampant. rampant. This is why Yellow White uh, Mother D Reaper was probably the best, most oppressive deck over there. Over here, this is why you see um, Yellow falling to the wayside because we're a hyper aggressive deck. Purple is hyper aggressive. Yeah, people like red Blue right is now. Hyper aggressive, but red. Like even if somebody's like, "Oh, I want to come in and play Uncle Bunga." Okay, yeah, get Dora red. Gora. Red. Your Goromon is hyper aggressive. It's like, okay, I want a big old giant beat stick and I'm gonna swing it hard. Okay, here's Dora Goromon, here's Jess Mine. Pick your color, go in, build a stack, five security in one turn. You can build it up in one of the two or three turns. There you go. I it we're so aggressive here in the TCG. That's always been the case in any card game and every card game that I play. So when we look at the OCG, it's like, hey. Yeah, you know, that that deck is going to run rampant over here. We got to take consideration that if that deck is more of a conservative, more of a grindy type of deck, it may not fare better here. Now, you can say security control here is, you know, by far the bee's knees. Yeah, but where's security control now? Yeah. Because we get a more aggressive. Every deck has gotten more aggressive. So the security control style deck it's not really doing too well. And then when it gets to the other sets, you're gonna have to take it out. And you're gonna have to take it out really, really hard in order to make it work. So in that point, is it even worth it? Is it even optimal? Is it even efficient to even do something like that? So it's almost one of those things to where you have to try to keep up and get a deck that can keep up with the meta. Like we know that Alpha Mind's gonna get support. The net set, the set after that, we know it's gonna be wanted on bit dogs. Mm-hmm. We know that Red's getting structured decks, Red's getting more support, Red's getting dual colors like everything else. That's gonna be around. We know that green is gonna be a more controlling style deck. What we things that we saw so far. We know that might be around in certain metas. We know blue is getting all the support in the world. That's going to be top dog. We know purple, that's going to be top dog. Like, even black, um, you know, black can even revert back to just being bit black blockers and be in EXO2. Even that, the blocker support, the art type of blockers got more support in EXO2. Like, great support. So it's not, it's one of those things to where 
yeah, you can look at the OCG, but use it as a baseline and not as a Bible. I think a lot of people, you know, just gown that, oh, yellow's going to be so oppressive here. We got to hit this, this, and this. And then when you go to the Digimon festivals and the real tournaments, yellow kind of falls to the wayside. It might have won here. It might have topped here. But how many Digifest tournaments that we have and how many did it top slash win? Compared yeah, to blue? Yeah, yeah. Compared to blue, compared to purple, like, 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 I mean, I would even make a case that I'm pretty sure that, um, red has more tops slash wins than yellow do in a Digimon festival that all happened. So it's one of the things to where we have to take it as a baseline and know what's coming. And that's the thing. You got to also think whatever happens over there, people see it and they see it coming and they're like, okay, how do we stop that when it comes here to, to the TCG? How do we overcome that when it comes here to the TCG? It's almost like we're getting a mirror, we're getting a um, window into the future, and we're like, oh, that's oppressive. How do we stop that over here? Oh, I know how to stop that. Oh, oh that's going to be easy to stop because of these cards that we get back in, you know, BT 1.5 or BT 4 or something like that, like, People think about this stuff all the time. This is why our meta and their meta is so vastly different. While blue is dominated here with second, with purple right second, you see yellow running rampant in the OCG still. Even after the ban list, mm -hmm. you still see it running rampant. So, yeah, it's one of those things to where just take it with a grain of salt, but be prepared for when it comes here. And I think, well, here's the thing that it, when it comes to the Japanese format that I feel like... Um, We've, we've already had a lot of evidence of, and it's even more so apparent now. The The thing is, is what happens in Japan isn't necessarily going to translate to the English um, for mm -hmm. a couple reasons. Like, let's look at Lord Nightmon meta, right, in BT5. Mm -hmm. they, they, we had way more green here in the English format that was doing well, topping, winning, than in Japan. Um so that was just, that was a big thing. And then even right now, right now we are in, like, we're in a spot where our metagame is completely different than Japan's for, like, like uncomparably so. Because when they were in BT7, they were having MDF, 4 Ice Wall, Reinforce, you know, like, th this was, like, if we had the same metagame, we'd be in, like, MDF, Susano Central, right? That would be yeah. a large portion of the metagame. We we don't have that, so it's like even looking at Jap like Japan's BT seven, it's it's not going to be the same. Our BT eight is not going to be the same. There's no there's nothing saying that we're not going to get another restricted list going into uh, BT nine when we get it here in the, in the English metagame. And so if we get a ban list pre BT nine that they didn't have in Japan, then that's going to obviously shift our metagame compared to that too. So it's like. Like you can use it as as a as a base guideline of what might be good, but you have to consider that there's there's just a lot of things that could change things differently. Like a lot of like the the main decks and what tops is a little bit different here than it was there. That's for different things, as is metagame trends, player preferences, being more controlly, being more defensive, uh, the differences of things like best of one to best of three, those are going to make things a little bit different. And then another thing that's going to change here is if we get, if we get side decks or mulligans, right, into the, into our official rule set that Japan didn't have in those same metagames, that's going to change things because like, mm -hmm. like mulligans are great. I think mulligans need to stay. Um, I think it's it's only been a good thing for since we've had it. It's it's a lo I've seen a lot more people enjoying it. They've had much less non games, but it is a mechanic to where if you if we get mulligans, you're gonna be able to build your deck slightly more high rolly. It's gonna you're still probably going to brick a lot, but you're gonna have uh, like with mulligans, you're gonna have a higher chance of hitting that curve. And so the decks that we see here will be different than the builds that we saw in Japan because the mulligan allows for you to see the top ten of your cards opposed to the top five right and so it's th those things can change there's so many things that can change in the english meta change from the japanese meta just off of very simple things even things as simple as like getting cards at a different time right like if if they got the you know x starter deck in bt8 but we don't get it till bt9 or you know like 
random example mm-hmm. like that, if that happens in the future, that's going to be different because like if, for example, we um, got the starter decks a little bit later for BT6 with the um, Old Force and the Gallant Mod, and so we had this little meta that was literally not played at all in Japan because they had the starter decks. Same thing with, um, I believe it was the uh, Mastermind Pyrgemon was in BT7 for their meta, correct? Um, I don't remember, but I know I know they were getting starter decks a little bit sooner than us, so they might have, but I think it was still in BT8. Okay, because I know the Mastermind All Force was supposed to be BT5 for us, but they pushed it back to BT6. Right, right. And so, uh, so yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it... <sighs> It is so interesting, you know. I took a I took a week or two off, you know. I said, okay, I'm gonna see what all is gonna transpire and how it's gonna transpire. So of course, I didn't keep up with it. I have family issues to deal with, you know. But just coming back and be like, well, nothing really changed. It's still blue and purple as the top two color dogs, you know. Red kind of fell off a of favor. Uh, green is still everybody likes green. Everybody likes black a little bit, you know, nobody's really playing, you know, too much of yellow, but now is one of the things to where you have to ask yourself with the power that blue and purple have, and we both agreed on this one in particular point, you cannot have both mulligans and side decking uh-huh. in a gar- in a card game, or it's going to be a disaster. Yeah. So whichever one, and it looks like Mulligan, like, like you know, they're trying out Mulligans now. And who's to know that people can be like, okay, now we tried out Mulligans. Let's try a side deck in here instead of Mulligans. Maybe they're doing a whole, maybe they're doing extensive testing. Mm-hmm. So may, maybe they're seeing, okay, if this color is super duper dominant, no matter what we do, maybe our next restrictive eliminate list is going to be targeted towards that color. Who knows? Maybe we might see targeted hits. Towards um, you know, blue more. Maybe Hammer Spark the one. Maybe Tommy the one or two. Like it's one of them things to where they're you know, most likely taking in a lot of data. So we have to be a little more patient. So just understand that you're gonna see blue and black ripping and running through the format right now. And really, you can play whatever you want to play. But if you're a competitive player, just know that blue and black are the best two colors. Purple. No matter. I'm not. not, not yeah, it's not blue and black, but purple and black. Yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. I had a slip of the tongue. I'm over here looking at an you, alpha. You, you love the alpha mod <laughs> too much. You just got alpha yeah, mod on at, the brain. I'm looking at the alpha mod deck right now. I'm like, how? Because I, I I saw that somebody um, popped a um, Digifest with an alpha mod deck. I was like, oh, interesting. Let me see what he did and what he played. So I'm sitting here just looking at the deck list. I'm like, yeah, that's going to be expensive for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like blue and purple are just going to be the top two dolls right now. I mean, even going to BT8, I think armor release is going to have a um, tricolor armor release is going to actually be able to compete because of the mechanic of armor release is just so freaking good and fantastic. But it's still going to be like pretty hard to dethrone these two tyrants up there. Mm-hmm. Right? A lot of people, like you know, just what two, three, like two and three, maybe even a month ago, we were talking about how red and blue was the top three dogs and how purple was number three. But then we get another set input it, and now red is totally like off the map unless you play a red hybrid. Mm-hmm. And even then, red hybrid, it's inconsistent. It's, it's still bricks. That's the problem. Like. Purple is consistent because it draws and tries so much and it's combo heavy. And then blue just gains so much memory that it doesn't matter if you Brit, you're just going to play your cards at a high cost. But And you just have stun token, potential. Right. And Yeah, so you can grind a game out. So it's one of those things to where like you can play a card and be like, okay, I'm going to choke my opponent to two instead of three. Or it's like, well, I'm okay. I'm going to just use all this memory to stun you out. And now you're slowing down like I am. Oh, wait, I just top that the champion. Let me now go in. It's Yeah, it's so the guitar pools for these two colors, purple and blue, are so, so good. that if you're playing competitive and you want to play, you know, the other four colors, 
you're going to have a hard time. Not saying you're not going to win. You can. Not saying you can. that you can't talk. You can. They're inconsistent. That's that's yeah. that's where a lot of this is going to come down to. Is they are inconsistent. Blue and blue and purple have high consistency cards. They have high single power strength cards as to where other colors such as green and red have less cards that are going to be high impact. A lot of red decks you need to hit Ty and I've this was something that was talked about with Jessmon a lot of players. Sometimes they didn't like Ty because playing Ty is is you're paying for memory for an effect that's gonna help you later as to where when you're playing when you're playing Matt, you bring back whatever purple card that you're needing. When you're playing blue, you get to play Davis, you get to search, you get to play Sorajo, which then you can swing and strip sources with right away. You you have these high consistency cards that when you're even playing your high cost cards like your four cost tamers you're getting immediate value out of it as for with tie you need to have a red digimon with four sources underneath to get the security check if you get stripped at if you get a single card stripped then you lose that and stuff like that and so and then you have like green where green just has like it has some good cards it's very focused around suspending too which is at the current moment and has been for a little bit not as powerful being able to suspend a lot of things that was a lot better back in the day when lord nightmon was around you could stingmon or bunch of stingmon it nidhogg has always obviously been a thing and these are those things but it's just like these colors aren't as consistent they're not bad you're gonna see red topping you're gonna see black topping you're gonna see you're gonna see yellow topping and you're gonna see green like you're gonna see these colors topping it's not it's not that they are unplayable it's that they are not as consistent and they're just card for card the pool of cards, like card for card, is just generally weaker. And even even if we say blue and purple at are a 9 out of 10 and yellow as is an 8 out of 10, having a 9 out of 10 card strength pool to an 8 out of 10 card strength pool is literally the difference between like tier 1 to tier 2. Yeah, like, like if you look at percentages, like people would tell you, well... I mean, you know, I have a optimal deck to where I can draw whatever I need at a, you know, 82% clip. And somebody's like, well, I have mine at 91% clip. That's 9%. That's still a whole letter grade above the other person. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the things to where when it comes to RNG in this game because of how it is played, you know, you lose five cards at the beginning of the game. You don't know what they are. And then you turn around and you draw your other, you know, you draw into your other 45 cards you have remaining. And you're like, well, RNG played a factor. Did I lose two of my level sixes? Did I, you know, security three of my rookies? Or, you know, is that all option cards? So in the later on in the game, I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty screwed. Like, it be because the blue and purple are so just consistent and effective and powerful when it comes to impact is one of the things to where, man, like I'd rather take, you know, the high, not, I don't mean not the high rolly deaths because obviously black and red are high rolly, but the ones that I can consistently hit that power spike every single game, two out of three games over an eight, nine, 10 round tournament going to top, you know, top eight and then still be able to go ahead and play another, you know, three, four rounds into a championship, like knowing that my deck has the mathematical advantage over every other deck. And if I hit that at the strive I'm supposed to hit it at, while they even stumble just a little bit, I'm gonna almost guarantee victory. Mm -hmm. And it's one of, and that's why you see purple and blue popping and like smashing everything that's literally what it is yeah it's not I mean, us being champions for our color yeah, exactly <laughs> it's i mean i mean i've said this on my stream a million times i probably haven't said it as the youtube as much so if you don't watch my twitch you probably haven't heard me say this as much but i i play i play to win i'm competitive so when my deck choices i don't really choose my favorite color i choose what deck i think is the best which is why i've played a lot of different decks and i've I changed very quickly the second i think a deck's better i'll i'll switch to that that's how i am but i've been on blue for a long time for a specific yeah. reason because it is really good do i like blue yes i really like mana manipulation memory manipulation i think that is um i've liked that in card games i think it's very cool i think it's it makes things for uh, more versatile plays. I also just generally liked how some of the blue cards work. I really liked Imperial. I liked 
the not only the Digimon, but I liked being able to swing with jamming and unsuspend and swing and go into Blitz Omni and stuff like that. It was it was this little like aggressive puzzle that you'd build and bond of friendship. I really liked Gabumon. I also thought it was like crazy that you could have this card that would be able to bottom deck your opponent's level five or lowers at the at the turn of having to trash your security, right? And I like that stuff. But mm-hmm. for the most part, I play blue because I just choose what I think is the best deck. And I've played blue for a long time because I think it's the best deck. They it, they are very strong. Getting rid of Ice Wall was not enough. And even if they hit Tommy or Korikaku on top of Ice Wall, I still don't think it would be enough. I still think Magna Garuru Koji build, while I think is unoptimal compared to the Tommy Korikaku Azulong build right now, the Koji Magna build is got third at Digifest. It's still good, and it still probably would be one of the top two best decks in the format, regardless of it, just because blue cards are good. Have you, if you ever swung into mm-hmm. the security of a blue player, it's never going to end Ugh. well. Like Very rarely are you going to be like, oh, I swung into a Madoki and a Strawby. Everything went well. You're going to be like, oh, I hit Sorjo. I hit Tommy. I hit Hammerspark. I hit Icewall. I hit Rattlestar. I hit Supreme Cannon. I hit, I hit, I hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Yeah. It's... It, it, it's good for a reason <laughs> yeah, i i agree and that's funny that you say that 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 was explaining why you you got really really turned on to the um the christmas deck yeah because i thought know, it was the best deck to, yeah being it like just being that and on top of that it started like green stars your um it starts your opponent's memory mm-hmm. so just be able to stun your opponent memory from there but you know later on the game it gets a little rough but yeah, yeah like it it's one of those things to where on your play style and just roll with it. And just roll like, with simple. it. Simple. And, and here's the like, thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I'm just going to say this, right? Because I get people who come into my streams on my YouTube channel, people like, oh, you play blue, blah, blah, blah. Who cares, bro? You're playing the card game. If you're going to play a card game, you have to understand that people are going to play the best decks. Okay? So if you want to play blue, but you're on like, I don't want to play blue because I don't want people to think of this, but like, just play what you enjoy. It's a card game at, at the end of the day. Right. I just so happen to be very competitive. So I enjoy playing long term. I really like tournaments. That's what I enjoy. And so if I'm going to spend a bunch of time playing tournaments, I want to do well. So I spend my time playing more often playing better decks than fun decks although i do play fun decks d brigade war Greymon, agu bond these are decks that i love to play they might not be the top decks but i'll play them all the time but you're not going to see me playing nationals with d brigade you know like right it's just that's just the thing but you need to like find that thing don't let people's opinions of a deck because of its position in the tier list right now define you because it's like i know so many people that are like i really want to play blue but i don't want to play meta and it's like that's fine but if you want to play blue then play blue you don't have to play it in a tournament play it with your friends right like i mean look if you look we know for a fact right now okay right now prim what is what is the best blue deck that you've seen at digifest right now the blue hybrid the zulon okay okay zulon so okay if you don't want to play meta then play play Hexablau. magna play magna play hexablau play you know play ancient mammoth the Pomon. like yeah. like there's other like play metal guru Amon. like there's other blue play play imperial yeah play right imperial now. like like there's other blue decks to play play all fours like you don't have to play the meta deck just play blue yeah it's like me i, I mean i'm i'm testing out i'm playing anubis eyes mod I'm not playing Mastermind Live Loop. Mm-hmm. I'm not playing all these other purple decks. Can I play it? Yes. Will I play it? If I was going competitive, I will definitely will. But it's one of those things Yeah, but where... you like to play Anubis. Right, because I feel like Anubis, right now, before Eismon gets hits to one, Anubis, Eismon Turbo is the most efficient way, because Anubis gives it rush. Mm-hmm. So now you're, you know, you're putting out four or five eyes, like, you know, three, four Eismon, you're banging their heads against a wall, and then you can play stuff like, you know, call them from the darkness to bring them back to your hand, discard them again, get them again, and they rush again. Exactly. So it's one of those things that I'm, I'm taking out. Like, I like playing Eyes Mine. My protege, you know, Candido, like he's playing, <laughs> he's playing, oh, um, Truby. Truby Mine. With the so with a heavy of, Lusamon package. Yes, he is. I know. Me and him talked about that. Giant Lusamon <laughs> package. Yes. Yeah, so, like, that, but that's his play style. Like, that's what he likes to do. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things to where, if you want to play a color, 
play a color. Don't yeah. let the whole competitive scene get you and frazzle you. No, just play the color that yeah. you want. Like yeah. I'm playing Alpha my dual girl mine. We know black is not good right now. I'm still playing it. Mm -hmm. I'm still got the deck. I'm still testing with it. It doesn't mean anything. Just because it's co not competitive doesn't mean that you can't play it. Like just yeah. have fun. Yeah, I just had to throw that out there because like I, I I've heard. I've heard the like not wanting to play a deck because it's it's too good or because people don't like playing blue. So I don't want people to not have fun playing with me. You got you got to you got to have fun. It's a card game, you know? Like even me who's like very competitive focuses on winning tournaments and stuff. I, I went to locals on Friday and I played Agu Bond, okay? You want to know why? Because I wanted to promote a promo Greymon and put two or three lightning joust on it and swing that's what i wanted to do you know if i win great if i lose whatever that's what sounded the most fun to me so i did it but when i go to a tournament i'm gonna play blue because i want to win and so it's like i, I just have to say that because i just i just i i hear it all the time of people not playing decks because of the perception of other stuff which i feel like is it defeats the point of playing a card game card game yes. it's a game hey mm-hmm i agree 100 percent like Come on now, like if you really go and take this to heart, man. Like, I, I hate I hate to say the cliche, but man, go touch some grass. <laughs> like seriously, it's way bigger than this. This you're supposed to have fun. This is a kids' card game. This this is labeled a kids' card game. This is for ages six and older. Like you gotta understand that this is not the end all be all. You're not gonna make you know a hundred million dollars off of this card game. You know, you like. Unless you're a content creator like, you know, Prim or Mario or Steven that, you know, do content for it, you're not going to make money off of it. So, like, come on now, people. Mm -hmm. Like, have fun. Build what you want to build. Play what you want to play. Yo, it's Digimon. Go ahead, man. Like, mm -hmm. do what you want to do. Yeah, we're all, we're all here because you either love card games, you love Digimon, you love the scene, you love hanging out with people. Whatever it is, you just got to have fun. But with that being said, I think that is going to be a fantastic place to wrap up. Do you have any more words for this week? We we were gone for a couple weeks there. So do you have anything you'd like to throw in there last minute or just any last words on what we talked about today? Oh, man, I just I'm glad to be back. I really am glad to be back. My schedule is back on track, so I'll be popping out videos left and right. So. The boy Dante is back. Yeah, there you go. If you if you all haven't subscribed, if you're watching this on my channel, if you haven't subscribed, go over to the Digimon Laboratory. Go ahead and hit sub. Give Dante some love. You know, he is a local of mine. He's obviously on here with me. We're going to be doing this. So if you're going to be supporting me, you should support the homie as well because he's got a whole different set of content that I don't do. So you can get a whole spectrum of Digimon content between the two of us. But it's for myself. I just want to say I uh, hope you all are enjoying BT7. This is actually, despite um, the, there being a lot of blue hybrid and stuff and that getting some people a little bit down, I think that this has been one of the funnest, if not the most fun metagame I've played in. There are just so many fun decks that can play different ways. Christmas, Red Hybrid, Dorgoromon, Yellow, the Purple Eyesmon. You can, you, can, you can just build so many different decks right there. It's really fun. So... Right now, when we're sitting in the in the spot where we're probably not going to be having really any BT7 big events up until like we go into BT8 with the Ultimate Cup and stuff like that, um, just go ahead, play around, have some fun, test some stuff out. We're going to be having some cards that are going to be getting hit on the ban list, so like make sure you get that those Jessmons in, those Eismons in, and just you know have some fun with the game. But with that being said, that's going to be this week's episode. We are very excited to be back with all. As always, if you have any questions that you want to be answered or talked about on the podcast, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Me and Dante, of course, are going to be checking those out. But with that being said, we are going to go get, get out of here. I am Primitive. And I am Dante. And we are going to catch you all next time. Have a great one. Peace out. Peace.